All right, we good to go? Yep. You recording? Yep. All right, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today um, in Detox Your Life. So I bet you're curious about what that actually means, right? Well, again, I wanna thank you so much for joining me uh, this afternoon. As you well know, you probably have a lot of things that you could possibly be doing, but you chose to be here with me and I thank you so much for that. For those of you who might not know me, I am a personal trainer and group exercise instructor with Glen Eagles. And I've been teaching and or training with Glen Eagles now for well, let's say a long time, not just with Glen Eagles, but in general, a long time. I went to add up the years and I thought, oh, it's like 37 years I've actually been teaching and then training in the latter part of that period of time. I love what I do and I have a really strong, strong passion for health and wellness overall. As many of you know, I love sports and I've played many sports over the years, golf, tennis. I was a bowler, um, just done lots of different activities, lot, enjoy watching sports as well. I hold many certifications within fitness and as a golf, as a, with a specialty in um, golf fitness, which is my TPI level two trainer. I'm also a holistic health counselor, which many of you might not be aware of, but I did get my certification through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition quite a number of years ago. I'm looking forward today to sharing with you what it actually means to detox your life. Now, before we get into the meat of everything, I am going to let you know that you are muted and you will remain muted throughout the presentation. However, you all know on Zoom by now that you have the opportunity to go into the chat button. You're more than welcome to go into that chat button and ask some questions that I might be able to answer towards the end of the presentation. Um, I also have Jamie on with me for any kind of um, additional issues or questions that you might have. I'm also asking that the videos are turned off. For some of you, I'm going to stop the video so we don't necessarily see you floating around the screen. Um, and hopefully you've just pinned or see my screen share. All right, so any questions, again, feel free to go into the chat button and I will do my best to get to those um, questions later. Um, and you can always find me in the fitness center later on <laughs> in the week should you have additional questions. So anyway, we are off and running into our detox for life. What does that actually mean to you? What does it mean to me? Well, detoxing, a lot of people immediately think, gosh, detox, Ainsley's going to talk about cleansing, or I'm going to talk about doing, you know, like I said, a juice cleanse. I'm not going to be talking about that. Detox for life is really about, I'm going to tap into nutritional detox, digital detox, home detox, and mind detox. Health is multidimensional. It includes physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual elements. And there's no right or wrong way to detox your life, regardless of the area that we are actually focusing on, right? So we are all bio individual and what might work for you might not work for someone else. My goal today with all of you is to spark some meaningful changes in your life by empowering you to find out what works for you and only you. It's not about everybody else. It's about you. Approaching this whole peace from a holistic mindset, I believe that we are all, like I just said, bio-individual. And therefore, what works for you doesn't work for me. So, you know, we've all gone through that with diets, especially, right? People say, oh my God, I'm on the keto diet or I'm on, you know, the paleo diet and you should try it. It'll work for you. Don't buy into all of that. We are all very different. Um, and that covers all aspects of our life. And you'll hear a little bit more about that as we move through this. Our areas of focus today, again, are on nutrition, technology, home, and mind. So detox has become a buzzword in the health and wellness space. Odds are you've seen a lot of advertisements, article books, social media posts about detoxing. But what does detoxing actually mean? The process of removing harmful or toxic chemicals, a regimen or treatment intended to remove toxins and impurities from your body, 
supporting health by removing and minimizing exposure to potential harmful materials or habits, adding in health supporting materials and habits. I believe that detoxing your life means energizing your life by making choices that fuel you and reduce elements that drain you. There are many, many approaches to detoxing depending on your personal preferences, lifestyle, and circumstances. The goal is ultimately the same, and that is to reduce exposure to potential toxins that can negatively impact the health. Now, when I refer to toxins, I don't necessarily mean like a toxic agent. It could be a toxic person, a toxic environment, a toxic situation, right? Toxic food. Um, you'll hear me say more than once that detoxing is unique. You've already heard me say it twice, right? Bio-individual journey for everyone. I cannot emphasize that point enough about all of our lives, right? And how we actually work through each day, each circumstance in our life. When most people think about getting healthy, they naturally begin by removing things from their diet and their lifestyle. Removing food habits, thoughts, and products can feel restrictive and ultimately make progress more challenging. So we all know when somebody says you can't have, we immediately retreat. I can't tell you how many people say, oh my God, I can't have it. And then they go and indulge in it 10 times more than they would have in the past. So when you add actually healthier elements to your body, to your mind, to your house, it leaves less space for the less healthy elements. We call that the crowding out theory. So you're adding healthier elements in, removing some of the negative ones. An example is with food. For example, with food, we might have a plate that has proteins, vegetables, rice, but we pile up the rice and maybe we double up on starch and we have potatoes too. Add more vegetables, eventually your taste buds shift, your palate changes, and you move out some of maybe the less healthy foods there. I mean, remember, none of us wanna feel deprived. So as soon as we hear that you can't have, we immediately retreat, right? So we just wanna add in healthier environment, a, a healthier things, it'll eventually move out or crowd out the less healthy. The other thing that's really important is to work in baby steps. Look at this little baby. You know that we as human beings did not get up and start running right away, right? We were on our backs, we learned to roll over, we learned to crawl, we learned to kneel, we learned to stand, we learned to walk, we learned to run, right? Sustainable shifts in our life. It's one new thing at a time. Many people are really tempted to do a complete overhaul of their lives in the journey towards increased health and happiness. I've had many people come to me and they say, you know what? I'm gonna start exercising next week and I'm gonna exercise every single day. Well, does that really, really, really happen? We know for sure it doesn't, right? And then when you don't exercise every day, you feel defeated. Or when you say, I'm gonna cut out sugar. The month of March, I'm gonna cut out sugar. Well, the first week rolls in and you're eating something that has sugar in it, or you're having that glass of wine that has sugar in it. So be really mindful that we're just looking for sustainable ships, ships, not ships, but ships, right? So you don't wanna to change too many things at once that makes it harder for you to actually follow through with the new habits and put them into action. Making sustain sustainable shifts means experimenting with one new thing at a time and choosing to make those changes that feel small, but they're doable, right? So we, we crawl before we walk, we walk before we run, right? I'm going to redo, I'm gonna completely redo my house. I'm gonna clean every single room. Well, you know what? Just do one room at a time. Change the way one room works at a time. You know, it doesn't have to be all at the same time, right? So those two things are really critical throughout this presentation. They will be shown within each area that I'm focusing on both in the crowding out theory and sustainable shifts. So detoxing comes in many forms, but the two most common forms that they fall under are actually diet and lifestyle. Doesn't that beach look luxurious? Woo, wouldn't mind being there right now. All right, so let's take a look at what that looks like, right? So diet, 
we know the majority of us think again about detoxing and it always really falls in the diet area. So what are some things that we can do to help enhance our life through diet? We can drink more water, we can do juicing or blending, add supplements and herbs, and eat more nutrient dense foods. So right now we're about to go into the nutrition piece of our detoxing. In lifestyle, which we'll touch on later, we've got meditation, exercise, vacations, clean beauty. Are you using the best beauty aids um, that might be green or is your house in a desirable decorated way that makes it inviting? But in regard to diet and nutrition, diet not meaning a diet diet, but truly meaning how well are you eating, we're going to tap into that now. There's so many benefits of detoxing. Many people experience positive effects from consistent integration of gentle or moderate detox practices in their routines. Nutritional detoxes, for example, help reduce processed foods, increase nutrient dense foods. Other forms include regular exercise, restful sleep, and mindfulness. So the benefits as we look across the spectrum of both lifestyle and diet, support digestion and gut health, improve your sleep. We can increase energy. We can get better into a better mood, better mind frame, improve your focus and mental clarity. That's huge in trying to kind of, again, add in, crowd out all the negative junk that might be in our life. When it comes to food detoxing, when it comes to food, detoxing is more than just eating clean or choosing organic. So a lot of people get a lot of pressure on them when people say, oh, are you eating organic? And we're gonna to touch on that in a moment. But the goal is truly to reduce toxins and replenish with nutrients that protect the whole body. Detoxing your nutrition can be an enjoyable process that doesn't involve overhaul your eating habits. So once again, we're back to really talking about that crowding out theory and sustainable shifts, right? The best way to approach nutritional detox is whatever way meets where you are. Following are a few tools and strategies that are gonna be helpful along the way. Now, I know that when you hear the word detox, you may think of extreme nutritional detoxing like juicing or juice cleanse, and it's not what I'm gonna be talking about today. It's certainly an aspect in a lot of conversation today, or not today in our lecture, but in general is about people being able to take these cleanses and feel a lot more energy and better about themselves. But I invite you, if you choose something like that, to really investigate what is best once again for you, very bio-individual. So let's look at the detoxification process. This screen is really intended for my medically oriented viewers. Our bodies are very complicated, complicated machines really. And the process that takes place for your body to operate is truly scientific in nature. And I know a lot of times we talk about nutrition, we say, oh, calories in, calories out. But a lot more is happening, just as it is with the detoxification process. The liver, and so let's talk about a couple organs. The liver serves as the body's primary filter. Your skin and intestines act as barriers to harmful substances. And the immune system, respiratory system, and your kidneys eliminate harmful substances. So you can see from what we've got here written, the detoxification process transforms fat soluble compounds, including food additives, pesticides, and pharmaceuticals, right? So that all becomes very much like, oh my God, so overwhelming. So if you just really have to think about, again, your body is a well-oiled machine. And you know, Hippocrates said a long time ago, let food be thine medicine and let medicine be your food really. And there's a lot of value in understanding that. So what is clean eating? What are nutrient dense foods, right? So clean eating or, heating or eating more whole nutrient dense foods means choosing foods that energize and nourish you on all levels. This isn't about perfection, it never is. And I know those of you that work with me know I say that all the time. It's about making choices that support you along your path to health. So understanding the science behind the body's detoxification process, which was our prior screen, 
process illustrates why filling your plate with a variety of bright colored plants is key. So what do we say? We say eat the rainbow, right? Eat the rainbow. So certain food choices that you make may influence how well the body can rid itself of these toxins while helping to reduce the risk of disease. And I'm sure as we move forward, you're gonna see a lot of things that are very common to you and that you might even already understand and know. So some of these beneficial foods and herbs and supplements activate detoxification enzymes or assist in the removal of heavy metals from the body. So here's your rainbow, right? Red, blue, purple, green, orange, and yellow. We've all heard for years, right, about shopping the perimeter of the grocery store. And it's really true. It's really true. That's where all your fruit and vegetables are. That's where all your meats, all your proteins are going to be. So, or all where all your nutrient dent dense foods are, right? Don't go down those aisles, really. You know, that's where all the processed food is. So let's look at some of these areas in eating your rainbow. So the red, let's take cherries, cranberries, strawberries, you see them all there. Red benefits, a lot of these foods benefit anti-inflammatory issues in your body, help to reduce blood pressure, cancer prevention, improved heart, skin, and urinary tract health. Orange colored, fruits and vegetables, help to balance the alkaline in your body, support digestive issues, your immune and vision support. And I know somebody today approached me and asked me if I was gonna be talking about alkalinity in our body. And I'll just touch on it for a moment. We know that when your body is more acidic, it's not very healthy, right? You wanna be alkaline. So try to reach for alkaline-based fruits and vegetables, right? Acidity in your body is not as healthy as alkaline. And a lot of times we need to make that subtle shift, again, sustainable shifts to have that change a little bit. Green veggies and fruits, cancer prevention, improved bone, heart health, and our mood, right? So we're gonna get a little bit into mind body later. And blue, well, that's anti-aging effects, improved brain and skin health and digestive support. So again, I was recently having a conversation with somebody about how can we promote our brain health, right? We know we do it through exercise, but eating also makes a difference. Not that I promote any particular diet, but we know that research shows that the Mediterranean fashion of eating, which really is pretty much kind of like what I'm talking about, really helps with your brain health. So fresh is best, right? <laughs> Homegrown is always best. Eating at home, cooking at home, which we've all been doing, I know for this past year because of COVID, is so much better than eating out. But also homegrown, if we have the ability to grow even herbs, herbs that we like, like I love cilantro and I love basil and I love parsley and those herbs, we can grow them at home, why not do that? So fresh is best. Um, so it's also a way when people start eating say they shift their eating habits a little bit to spice up your meal. Herbs, they can make a big difference. So there's so many supplements um, and herbs that can bring support to your overall health. We know that in the past year, we've heard a lot about zinc, vitamin C, vitamin B to boost our immune system, right? We've all been trying to create a healthier immune system. So take a look at some of these, right? To, to help your body detox through herb, and supplements. Vitamin B, what's, what are vitamin B origins? Dark leafy green vegetables, legumes, whole grains, amino acids, right? Proteins containing foods such as eggs, fish, and meat. Um, vitamin C, we know how important that is. Zinc, pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, so easy to snack on and so, so good for you. Cilantro, you know, we don't talk a lot about ridding our body of heavy metal, right? But it, Years ago, I had a client who had me soak my feet in a bath and the amount of metal that comes out of your body is incredible. So um, it, it's pretty powerful. So to try to rid our body of that, that's a huge toxin in our body. We really wanna do the best we can to rid ourselves of it. Turmeric we know um, is fantastic for you, it helps you detox. It's also anti-inflammatory. Um, so there's a long list of herbs and supplements that can enhance your diet. So I'm all about meal prep. I'm all about taking time in your week to prep ahead, right? So it's really important that at some point 
you know, many of you are retired, but at some point during your week, let's say it's Sunday, you take time to create a menu for your week, go shopping, get the best healthy um, fresh foods you can and take an hour or two to prep everything. So for example, you know, I work at the club from Sunday through Wednesday. I have bowls in my kitchen, well not my kitchen, my refrigerator, of mushrooms, of tomatoes. I have my salad mixing. I have my protein mix, whatever it is. This week it was bean, a three bean salad I had. And so every morning I create my salad and I throw all these things in, which is where we're going next. Making the best bowls that you can make, right? So they are fun, you can be creative, and the whole family can enjoy them, right? So we know that they've become very popular, whether it's a fruit bowl or a veggie bowl or a dinner bowl or whatever it might be. So easy to make. So again, you prep ahead, you plan ahead, you've got a base, you've got a protein, a vegetable, and some sort of, I say fat or sauce, some sort of dressing. Really easy to make these bowls, that's what I do. Sunday through Wednesday so that I am prepared when I get to work to have a nutritious, nutrient dense meal that will keep me satisfied for the rest of the day. So let's take a look at what some examples are, right? Your base, it's usually a grain of some sort. You've got farro, quinoa, brown rice, oatmeal, rice noodles, whatever works for you is what's important, the protein, right? So we've got legumes, you've got salmon, it could be chicken, it can be, it can be whatever protein you want. It could, well, we've got eggs there, hard boiled eggs, vegetables, you know, if you make roasted vegetables throughout the week, you have leftovers, throw them in a salad. You can throw anything in them. Again, you're adding in, right? You're not depleting or, or denying yourself of anything. Let's take a moment to talk about pesticides, huge toxin. Did you know that the United States uses 1.2 billion pounds of pesticides per year? What stands out in this video? I saw this video, I'm like, really? This guy is spraying all over a huge plantation of what, I don't know, maybe little limes or something it looks like on the trees. And he's basically wearing a hazmat suit. He is covered from head to toe. He has a mask on so he doesn't breathe in or have that pesticide touch his body. And then we buy it and we eat it, right? So I find that just so ironic. So are you familiar with the Dirty Dozen? Now, I'm not a, I don't buy everything organic and I would never tell anybody they had to. But as you well know, there are 12 fruits and veggies that according to the Environment Working Group, they have told us for years are important to buy organic. Strawberries, spinach, kale, grapes, peaches, cherries, tomatoes, celery, potato, peppers. If you go online, you can get that list printed up. I know I don't have it printed here for you. And you can start to kind of pay attention to that because it really is important. Regardless of whether or not you buy organically, please be sure to wash everything that you are gonna consume that's been on the shelves on the perimeter of the aisle or the supermarket, right? Because you don't want all this crazy pesticide on your food. So we just discussed pesticides, but you also have to remember that two other things are considered toxins in your bodies too much sugar and too much trans fat, right? So just make sure that you are moderate with that um, in your diet because they are classified as toxins in your food. So what are our takeaways about our nutritional detox? There's no right or wrong way to detox your nutrition. Choose foods that energize and nourish you, your mind, your body, and your spirit. Reduce and avoid processed or overcooked and highly pesticide foods. Replenish. So remember, add in, crowd out the bad stuff, right? All right. So from nutrition, we're jumping into something that I'm kind of a favorite of right now, and that is digital detox. So have you thought about that? Have you thought about how much technology now influences our everyday life? So digital detox can mean several things. As with all areas of health, the more you know, the more empowered you can be to make informed choices that align with your current needs. While it's practical to remove 
well, it's impractical, <laughs> it's not practical to remove all technology from your life. Again, making small strategic or sustainable shifts in this area can support your well being over time. Digital detox can mean several things. You can completely withdraw from technology for set amount of time, limit the amount of time spent using technology, work to minimize your exposure to electromagnetic fields, and learn strategies to mitigate the effects of constant technology. It does take a little bit of work, right? And there's a lot of benefits from detoxing digitally. We use technology in many ways each day from checking emails to at work to checking emails at home, connecting with our loved ones on social media. Obviously this past year, we've been kind of sequestered and having to do all these Zoom meetings. The rise of mobile devices has put our world at our fingertips and increased our social and emotional reliance on technology. In fact, did you know that the average person checks their phone, and I'm gonna say their phone or their iWatch because that's on our wrist too, 96 times a day. Studies have shown the value added and health benefits by taking a break from technology. And I am all in on that. A couple of months ago, I really chose to do that. And it made a huge difference for me, especially in the area of stress. We become very competitive in our world of our digital world, really, especially those on social media. Okay, there's several reasons to limit your technology use or create a healthier boundaries around its use. So let's look at a couple tips and tools for creating healthier digital habits. How about designating one day every week or maybe two to completely unplug from all devices? This encourages you to get outside and try something new. I can honestly tell you that one of my biggest pet peeves is when I am out with somebody, maybe I'm taking a walk with them, maybe I'm having lunch with them, and they have their cell phone right there with them all the time. In fact, the other day I was walking with a friend and I mentioned it because she's always on her phone. She said, you know what, but my grandchildren, but my husband. And I said, you know, but years ago, we're, you know, we're 60 years old. Years ago, not that long ago, we didn't have technology at our fingertips. And those emergencies occurred at that time. And we were able to deal with them, even if it was a half hour later. So take time to be with the people that you care about, about most and put that aside, right? Put it aside. So that way you can actually be present, which again, we're going to touch on a little bit later when we talk about detoxing your mind and body. The other place a lot of people have their phone is next to their bed. So some people I understand use it as their alarm, but you know what, if it's next to your bed, you're probably gonna reach for it. You're gonna quickly check your email again one more time before you go to bed, or you're gonna quickly text somebody. But it's really, not only is it that aspect of it not healthy, but you also have to understand when you have, you know, all the blue lights in your room, whether it's from your TV or from your phones, they're not, they're, they're causing you a little bit of harm and, really taking away your ability to sleep better. So put, here's some ideas for you. Put some additional plants around the house, right? You're like, what? We were just talking about technology. Now you're talking about plants, but plants absorb radiation and help purify the air. Now we know that live plants bring you oxygen, right? So we know, we've known that for years. So add some live plants in your house. Turn off your Wi-Fi at night. Turning off the router will reduce drastically the amount of radiation in your environment. Less radiation promotes more sleep, which is what I was talking about, that blue light, right? We always talk about, you lay your iPad next to your bed, you've got your alarm clock, you've got your phone, you've got the TV, whatever else you have in there, it's, it's stimulating you when you don't even really realize it. And it's giving you more radiation than you really want. Another way to help within your home is to use healing stones. Many stones are known for the protective properties, black tourmaline, shungite, and oregonite. They are all used to help shield off radiation. The other thing I know I have in my house and a few of my rooms are the um, salt lamps. Those are also very good to have in your home um, to help with that. All right, so speaking of your home, let's enter your home, right? Have you ever walked into a home that immediately felt inviting and uplifting? Have you detoxed your home lately? 
An important part of energizing your home is to create harmony, aligning it with who you are and what you value. Does your home environment help you thrive? If so, then there's some form of physical harmony to play, at play. If it's not, what's missing? What can you let go of? What night might need to actually shift in your home? So your home should be a place where you relax, you rejuvenate, and you practice some self-care. I can honestly tell you that when my home is not organized, maybe it's just my den and I have a lot of papers everywhere, it is very disruptive. It does shift the energy. So once you clear it out, you really always feel a whole lot better. An important part of energizing your home is creating that harmony, aligning it with who you are and what you value. Does your home environment help you thrive? Is there anything that you can let go of? So let's look at this, six ways to energize your home. Let's create a flow. That means space to move about, connection at different areas, overall balance, large and small pieces. When was the last time you decluttered? You probably, maybe some of you are saying, oh, I don't have clutter. Maybe it's just a drawer. Maybe it's that kitchen junk drawer, right? Start with one area at a time. So again, sustainable shifts. If you think, oh God, I have like three different rooms that have so much clutter in them. One at a time, one day at a time, maybe one part of that room at a time, right? Designate time to do that, even if it's a half hour. Organize, right? So what? find out what actually works for you, right? Place logically and think vertically. Uh, so maybe your room just needs that small little tweak with the way in which it's decorated. Simplify. This is often one of the ultimate goals of energizing a home. It's a primary factor in keeping it sustainable. The more that you can simplify, the easier it will feel. Downsize. Give everything a home, right? So maybe it's not perfect in this room, it's better in another, but maybe you just don't even need it anymore. When we talk about detoxifying now, we're gonna talk about your air quality, right? So we're in South Florida. We, many months of the year, have our homes closed up because it's so hot out there. But boy, when you can open up the windows and let fresh air in, let sunlight in, let it in. Buy plants, we already talked about that, energizes your home. How about filtering your water? Do you have filtered water? Add earth elements, so we're back to adding crystals and burning sage and things like that. You know, burning sage gets rid of all the negative energy in your home, right? Enjoy the creative process and add elements that bring you joy. So do you have some things that have just been in your home for a long time and they're there just because they're there? Decorate creatively, have fun with it. Change color. Color brings us energy, right? Light some candles. Know that this is an ongoing process and it can continually be adjusted. So just because you did something this week doesn't mean you have to keep with it all the time, right? How about eco-friendly items? Our home is where the heart is, and that's why it should be kept free of chemicals, plastics, and toxins as much as possible. Now, plastics are a huge issue, and you all know that, right? So our seas are filled with plastics. They're killing off our, our um, fish, and it's, it's really a bad situation in the oceans. But we, when we go to the store, everything seems to be in plastics, right? Oh, unless you're shopping the perimeter of the grocery store right? Take it out of the plastic. Prioritize reusable items over single use ones, right? So even small swaps, like using a reusable bag instead of the plastic ones. So a lot of us have gone to that, right? If you go to Trader Joe's, we're all using reusable bags. I think even Publix allows it now. Um, it, it can make a difference in, it, in our environment and impact your, your environment. Look for established third-party emblems for organic cosmetic fair trade certified items or green guard certified products. Opt for sustainable and recyclable re materials. So how about your clothing or your bedding? What textiles can you possibly use? How about organic cotton or tensile? Any of those are also very good. We could spend hours talking about eco-friendly items for your home. Just, you know, maybe take a look at what you have you can take a look online and dive a little bit deeper into that. Non-toxic cleaning routine. So this is just for fun, right? So we've got different ways, instead of getting your 
typical kitchen all-purpose cleaner, grab some distilled white vinegar, some water, baking soda, and maybe a few essential oils. I know I get essential oils from a company and we use this one particular um, essential oil mixed with water and I love it. And it is such a great cleaner for our kitchen counters. Or how about some air freshener, right? Make it yourself, it's not difficult to do. Remember, no plastics, yes to glass containers and biodegradable products. We just talked about that, home cleaning substitutes, baking soda, lemon juice, white vinegar are standard. So what are our takeaways from home detox? Detoxing your home means caring for the space in ways that energize you and support you over your overall well-being. Creating a clean home often supports the health of the greater community. All right, so last but not least is my favorite, and it's all about uh, taking a breath, right? Pausing, detoxing your mind and body, saving the best for last. So as we shift gears, um, I think it's most important in our lives today, especially after we've come out of the year that we've come out of in 2020, and we're still a little bit in the mucky muck, right? It's important to consider the impact that your mindset can have on overall health and well being. A key part of detoxing is recognizing how your thoughts, feelings have the power to keep you stuck, stuck in certain mindsets and patterns. Everyone take a minute now to pause. Take a deep breath in, inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Just take that breath and let it all out. Remember, you wanna become the best version of yourself by living mindfully. When was the last time that you really thought about your thoughts? Just as we have food habits, social habits, and a variety of other habits, we also have mental habits. These mental habits can energize you or drain you in all areas of your life. Choose thoughts that generate greater compassion and empowerment. Now, I know many of you walk throughout your beautiful club every day. I see you walking as I come and go from work, and I think that's fantastic. But let me ask you this about your walks. Now, some of you are with friends and that's fantastic, but some of you are not. And are you plugged into a headset? Are you listening to music or a podcast? Are you talking on the phone while you're walking? You know, my mother, she used to take walks every single day up in a park up in New Canaan, Connecticut, after my dad had died, huge park. People played up there. There were dog parks, there were paddle courts, there were swimming pool. It, beautiful estate on the property. And she walked and she walked and she loved nature and she would observe things. She'd pick a weed from the ground. She'd pick up a feather that was dropped from a duck. She'd look up to the beautiful sky. She'd look to the trees. She'd look all over. And you know, I think we've lost a lot of that. I really do. Take a walk outside with nothing. Put that phone away, put those ear pods away and just kind of commune with nature, right? Um, there's a lot to say about that and for that. Same thing, you know, I'm gonna say, this is saying go on slow walks. I've played golf with people who have music going in their golf cart. I'm like, why, you know? Why not look at what you have around you? It can bring so much benefit to your overall being, right? So unplug, we just came out of our technology piece, right? So unplug. Remember, we just talked about all that, right? So now it's your time, it's your time observe what's around you, right? Think about that. A lot of us are from New York. Did you used to go to Central Park years ago and take a walk around the park? Or did you go to the beach? Go to the beach, take a beautiful walk on the beach. I can't emphasize that enough. I wish I did it more. And maybe I will after this presentation. <laughs> All right, so let's just take a few minutes uh, taking a deep breath in. So we are all going to do a little exercise here. This breathing exercise, you may have heard about before, but it's something that you can do each and every day, and it will really support and help you to just take everything down a notch. So do me a favor, close your eyes. I want you to take a deep breath in to the count of four. So you inhale, one, two, three, 
four, hold your breath for the count of five, four, three, two, one, and exhale to the count of six, five, four, three, two, and one. Again, deep inhale, slow inhale to the count of four, three, two, one, hold your breath for five counts, three, two, and one, and then exhale through your mouth to the count of six. Let's do two more rounds. Deep breath in through your nose. Remember, you're pulling that breath up from below your belly button, diaphragmatic breathing, right? Hold your breath for five counts. And then exhale, six counts. One more time, deep breath in. Slow it down, hold your breath. And then exhale out very, very slowly. Remember that breathing technique. We usually do eight rounds. We'll just do four for today. You can do that a couple of times a day. It's gonna slow down your nervous system, right? It's gonna to help to quiet your mind. It helps to stimulate the vagus nerve, very important because that actually is known to trigger a calming response in your body. At the very beginning, we talked about your meals and now it's talk time to sit back and enjoy your meals, right? Remembering that shared meal times are about so much more than what's actually on the menu. They're where we grow relationships, celebrate milestones, build memories, and where we live between bites. So this is probably my favorite slide because it holds such truth for all of us, especially again, as we've come through one of the toughest years we've ever seen. As my mother used to say, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. Encourage with your words and actions because you never know who you might be inspiring. Speak from your heart. Your words have great power. Use them to support and inspire. Find your inner silence by scheduling two minutes break, two minute breaks every hour. So that's pretty cool. One of the other things I always say to people, we know we've got to get up and move, right? Two minutes of just quiet time. Just take that time. Maybe it's in the bathroom. Maybe you walk into another room. Maybe you go outside your front door. Whatever it is, try and take just that two minute breather every hour. Relate to others kindly. Again, we've been in a very high stress level for so many reasons this past year, but you've got to start with yourself. Are you kind to yourself? So a lot of my clients know I kind of reprimand them when they speak negatively. I can't do this. This isn't going to work, right? Remember, you're with yourself the most. So start speaking nicely to yourself. Think about that. What do you say when you speak to yourself? Love yourself, and then you can love others, right? I was always reminded that we were blessed with two ears and one mouth, right? So remember, we want to really kind of just take time and listen to others too, right? We're very quick to offer our thoughts and our opinions. Settle in and listen sometimes and think freely with an open mind. The key part of detoxing is recognizing how your thoughts and feelings have the power to keep you stuck in certain mindsets and patterns. From there, you can actively choose thoughts that generate greater compassion and empowerment. Really important. Ah, uh, the perfect way to reset and refocus is simply take a pause. How often do you take that pause? Look at this guy. He's just hanging out in the cave somewhere, <laughs> out in the desert somewhere, mountains, just taking a moment. Did you know that the way you think can affect the way you feel and the way you feel can affect how you think? Your mind and body are strongly linked. The mindsets we hold, memories, habits, and beliefs can all influence health positively or negatively. Being mindful means being fully present and aware of your thoughts, feelings, and actions and what's going on around you. Mindfulness is more than a mindset. It's an integrative mind-body approach. So we talk about that, right? You see in here, we have that word neuroplasticity. So we know that we have a class at Glen Eagles and 
it talks to that. It's the mind body connection with ageless grace. Now, meditation is a challenge for many of us, myself included, okay? Um, I have difficulty with sitting quietly, I really do. So it's something I practice, but I practice it with guided meditation. So I go onto a YouTube and I find somebody that resonates with me in their voice and in their message. There's a lot of great meditations online. Um, and yeah, I know I'm sending you back to technology, but take a moment, do a little bit of quiet meditation. Even if it doesn't work initially, it might work again for you. So here are some of our daily mindful, mindfulness tips as we wrap up. Practicing presence, gratitude, acceptance, right? Meditate, do single tasks, write down three gratitudes every day. Say grace, give thanks, give back. Start with yourself. Let yourself feel, right? And then remember, I love this. See everything as temporary. One more time referencing my mom, but this too shall pass, right? And we've all heard that before. So as we wrap this up, I wanna say that we are not just thriving, we are also surviving, right? As we conclude, it's important to remember that as you reflect upon this information, that the most effective detox is sustainable and holistic and supports the body's natural healing and detoxing process that works for you. There are many areas to focus on and many approaches to detoxing depending on your personal preference, lifestyle, and circumstances. But the goal is ultimately the same, to reduce exposure to potential toxins that can negatively impact your health. We're surrounded by toxins on a daily basis from skincare products to pesticides to air pollution. We've developed habits that don't support overall health. Toxic buildup can contribute to everything from skin rashes to bloating to brain fog to mood mood imbalances. You may, may be motivated to detox different areas of your life for many reasons. Maybe you wanna improve your energy. Maybe it's your digestion. Maybe you're ready to get out of the old and bring in the new. It's important to tune in to your reasons for detoxing. Getting clear on your intentions help you receive what you hope to gain. So I wanna thank you all so much for joining me this afternoon. Once again, I know that you have a lot of options in your day and I'm just so grateful that you chose to be with me in this past hour or so. As I said, if you had any questions at all, feel free to go into the chat button and talk to me about what questions you have. You also know that you can find me in the fitness center. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions there. Um, but I wish you all well. I wish you the best in your journey to maybe make some small changes in your life and in your pattern of living. Again, remember sustainable shifts, right? One thing at a time. You don't wanna just get up and try and change everything at once. All right. So again, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm trying to find my way to the chat button. And oh, as I was like, as luck would have it, my, let me see here what we've got. Chat, let's see what I have here. Thank you, Stephanie, you're always so kind. Lori, thank you. Thank you, Jack. I will have it posted on YouTube tomorrow. You can see it and send it from there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, that's from Jamie. So yes, you can see it um, on YouTube. Uh, tomorrow in your channel. Again, thank you so much, everybody. I wish you well. I wish you happy and healthy lives always. And I'll see you in the fitness center very soon. Take care.